The 2024 NBA Draft is right around the corner and the Golden State Warriors are currently in do or die mode. With the length of the rest of Steph Curry's career coming into question, the organization is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do you go all in to win or do you try to close out these last few years of the dynasty ensuring your legendary players play out the last few years of their careers with the team they've always played with? Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Switch Culture. The answer to this is very simple, win. Now the Warriors were not able to keep their first round pick this year as that has been conveyed to the Portland Trailblazers after a 2019 trade that saw Andre Iguodala go to Memphis. The Warriors sent the Grizzlies a first round pick in order to dump off Iguodala's salary after they were hard capped by the KD for D'Angelo Russell sign and trade deal, one which eventually got them Wiggins and Kaminga. This has left the Warriors with a single late second round pick at number 52 via the Milwaukee Bucks. Now the likelihood of the Warriors getting an impactful player this late in a draft that doesn't seem all that talented from the outset is very slim, however there is the small chance that a player could pan out and give the Warriors some good minutes off the bench. Considering these late second round picks don't contain much value, it's better that the team keeps the pick and see if they can get lucky with a player that could provide some backup minutes. After scoring on a player like TJD last season, it's possible that a potential top pick could be hidden in the later rounds. As such, I've rounded up 5 mock draft picks for Golden State from each of 5 sports publications. ESPN, Bleacher Report, The Ringer, Hoops Hype and Sporting News have all released their 2 round mock drafts and in today's video, I'll go over the 5 potential picks to determine who best would help the Warriors. The Warriors also worked out a 6th player in Sam Griffin, whom I'll discuss as well as this provides some insight as to what the Warriors are looking for. Before we start however, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Switch Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content on the planet. Now get ready, you're about to get One of the first things you have to realize about evaluating late round draft prospects is that teams are drafting based on player fit. When drafting at this position, while there are likely still some young players available that might develop, it's a higher risk selecting these players at this point in the draft. A 19 year old at this position is well behind his lottery pick peers at the same age unless the player has been overlooked. An established player who has developed into their skill set will provide more value in the short term and have less risk. So taking that into account, we look at the player the Warriors already worked out, Sam Griffin. Griffin is a 22 year old 5 year college player who spent 2 years at Arlington, 2 years at Tulsa and his last year at Wyoming. He's listed as 6 foot 3 and averaged 17 points, almost 4 rebounds, 3.5 assists while shooting 39% from 3 and 43% from the field his final year. His strengths lay in his shooting and his range. As a guard, he tends to focus more on scoring than passing and with poor shot selection, it wouldn't do well to have him facilitating for a second unit as a primary. He's mostly good for an off the bench scorer in catch and shoot with limited handling opportunities. While he can spot up shoot with a nice mid range as well as a float game, it'll be a lot more difficult to score over NBA defenses and my expectation is that he'll struggle at the next level. His comp would be Marcus Sasser of the Pistons and Biggs will dislike playing alongside these types of players on the second unit. Now while the main complaint about this team has been the lack of a true 7 foot big man that can protect the rim, most of the 7 footers skilled enough to play in the NBA are already gone by the 52nd pick. You're left with a 6 foot 8 or 6 foot 9 backup center at this point and the Warriors are going to need more than that to compete. Despite this, let's have a look at what these sports publications are suggesting the Warriors select with their pick. From Hoops Hype, the first player we have on the list is also the youngest. Izan Almanza is a 6 foot 9, 18 year old center from Spain who most recently played for the G League Ignite, averaging over 11 points and 7 rebounds in 27 minutes a game. He's got great footwork for a young big man, great agility for his size, can put the ball down and get to his spots. He's got a great hook shot that he can rely on out to 10 feet and effortless athleticism providing a lob threat around the rim. While his catch radius isn't as impressive as a player like Derek Lively II, his 7 foot 1 wingspan means he still has some potential. 
His dad is former professional player Steve Horton, who's also 6 foot 9, so the advanced footwork makes sense. His two weaknesses of note are his low shooting percentage, which comes in at just 56% for a player who doesn't shoot threes. Defensively, he could be better, which is likely one of the reasons he's this far down in the draft. Considering he's just 18 though, he's got plenty of room for growth. If the Warriors were to start with TJD next season, Almanza could be a serviceable backup if he shows some improvement and also gets the proper amount of playing time. If the Warriors do draft him, another season in the G League would help him further develop his skills and put some great perspective on a prospect that could turn into a longer term investment for Golden State. This doesn't help a whole lot with winning now, but it certainly gives the Warriors some youth to build around a future squad. The next player we have comes from the ringer and is also a center. When he steps on the court, at 6'8 with a 7'4 wingspan, you will feel Adam Bona's presence. The 21-year-old third-year college player recorded a 38.5-inch vertical jump at the Combine, but reportedly recorded a 48.5-inch jump in a private workout, which would best Keon Johnson's record of 48 inches. Whether that's true or not is irrelevant, as he's easily the most athletic big man in the draft, matching Jericho Sims at the very least. He's an extremely physical player who, at 245 pounds, uses his size to dominate his opponents. This can either work well at the next level or not so well. He's been whistled for a lot of fouls at the college level and my instincts tell me that such physical dominance in the NBA might not lend itself well to this type of bully ball on the defensive end. While he is indeed a very good defender, it might take him some time to get acclimated to the foul calling in the NBA as smart players who specialize in drawing contact like Luka, Jokic, SGA could make things difficult for him in the interior. While it's great to have a player like Boner to come off the bench, it's more important that he can stay on the floor. ESPN has the Warriors drafting Bronny James, and considering I've given you guys multiple videos on LeBron Jr., we'll skip the comparison for this go-around. You can see the latest on Bronny James here in the link posted in the top right of your screen. Next up, the Bleacher Report has Golden State drafting the oldest player in this group, 23-year-old Tristan Newton, a 6'3 guard who spent the last two of his five college years at UConn. By the way, due to the shortened season during COVID, these players were afforded an extra year, so that explains all these five-year players. I figure I should mention it, however, because at the end of the day, it allows us to evaluate the younger players properly with more context. From the box scores, his last year he averaged 15 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 6.2 assists, and committed 2.5 turnovers a game. He shot over 80% from the free throw line every year in college, but only shot 32% from deep and 42% from the field last season. What this means is he'll benefit a lot from spacing and he does take some difficult shots, like very deep step back threes. He eased into more of a facilitating and rebounding role during his final year, but watching him play, it's obvious he's a very cerebral player. He knows the complex schemes UConn Dan Hurley wants to run and executes them very well. He knows where to find his teammates in their spots and takes every advantage given to him. He's not a player that seems to be looking for his own shine and by the looks of it, could have scored more than 15 a game if he was that type of player. He gets his guys involved, sets screens and makes winning plays. He sees the floor extremely well and is a guard I believe could excel at the next level. He's not especially athletic but he's quick and he moves his feet well on defense. He plays under control, uses his speed when he needs to but otherwise sets up his offense to execute in a half-court set. His stats didn't really sell me on his abilities, but his film certainly did. The last player covered in these mock drafts proposed by Sporting News is a point guard named KJ Simpson, a player out of Colorado who last season averaged 19.7 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 4.9 assists on 43% shooting from 3 and 47% from the field. If he was a freshman in college, putting up these numbers, every team would be looking to draft him at number one. But they're not. So what's keeping KJ Simpson off the top of draft boards? He's a 21-year-old junior out of Colorado. Oh, he's also only six foot tall. Now the first thing you're probably thinking is that he's a liability on defense. However, that is not a particular area of weakness for Simpson. He's got tight handles, top tier court vision, and a deadly three ball. He knows where to find his teammates on the floor, knows when to slow it down, and when to speed it up. Did I mention he shot 87% from the free throw line? What really stands out is how drastically he improved in the last two years. In his freshman year, this kid was shooting 25% from three and 77% from the free throw line. 
He's gotten better each year and despite his small size at 6 foot tall, the fact that he has such a well-rounded and polished game sets him up well for success at the next level. This is the player you want off the bench that can facilitate, shoot the 3 ball and isn't a liability on defense. A player like Simpson can run alongside TJD. His ceiling isn't yet defined so expect him to get even better. Now since we didn't cover Bronny James in today's video, I figured I'd give you guys a bonus. I've had a number of requests to do a video on Kai Sato, but up until now I haven't really had much of a reason for the Warriors to draft him. For those of you who don't know, Kai is a 7 foot 3, 232 pound Filipino player, only the second tallest Filipino to ever play professional basketball. He's 22 years old and has been playing professionally since 2020 when he joined the NBA G League. There haven't been any full-blooded Filipino that has been to the NBA and I just want to be the, the first one and I just want to show everyone that we can also make it. The fracas that ensued due to COVID prevented him from rejoining the G League Ignite team after leaving the country, so he ended up not finishing that season. He continued to play professionally for the Adelaide 36ers in the NBL as well as a few stints in Japan. Most recently, he played 34 games, starting 24 of them and averaging 20 minutes per. His field goal percentage improved from 51% up to 58% over the last few years and his points per game also improved to 13. Again, this is a Japanese league so take these numbers with a grain of salt. He did play last year in the summer league for the Orlando Magic where he averaged 3 points, 3 rebounds and 2 blocks in 11 minutes before he sustained a back injury, after which he went back to play in Japan. He also averaged 2 turnovers per game in the summer league so not the greatest showing. What he does bring is a lot of size and a defensive presence in the paint. If the Warriors were to take a chance on Kai Sato, they likely wouldn't draft him, but bring him on as an undrafted free agent to give him an opportunity. He did work out for NBA teams a few years ago, but those didn't really work out. They didn't think he was ready. He has improved since and considering the Warriors need for size, it might be tenable for them to invite him for a workout to see how much he's improved. That said, I am expecting the Warriors to inquire about a center after Steve Kerr's comments, but I expect them to look for a more talented player that they could use in the starting lineup. So now that I've laid out 6 potential options for the Warriors, 3 guards and 3 centers, who do you think the Warriors should draft? Which of these players could be the most impactful for Golden State in a bench revamp that will likely see Chris Paul head to a different team and answers to Steve Kerr's prayers about needing a big man? Post your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.